is going on, guys? It's Brian Jackson, Men's Comics. And here we are talking about this market trends again in the comic community for the week. That's right. This is the three up, three down. We're talking about three up trends and three down trends. We are getting close to Christmas. Jack, have you finished your shopping yet? Oh, my God. Finished. Let's talk about starting. Uh, <laughs> you know, I know you are a more prepared parent than me, but I'm one of those last second shoppers. Yeah, I'm usually one of those guys like one for you, one for me two for you one two for me <laughs> but either way most of our christmas shopping's done i still have some nephews and nieces uh but that's gift card stuff but either way you guys watching have you guys finished your christmas shopping started your christmas shopping let us know but we're gonna get into those trends right now starting with the three up and the first one we're talking about everyone's talking star wars especially lately with the soka coming back and we've had pretty much a star wars character on the three up three down lately and it's no different this week we have grand admiral thrawn coming that's that's right that's right uh down we had the rumors of you know we knew ahsoka was coming and then there was rumor that there was going to be a reference to grand admiral thrawn and it's interesting because a lot of disney rumors don't come out to be like that dead on um you know disney keeps a real tight lid on things but that rumor played out we we got the reference um this week on the mandalorian episode and you have seen People reacting accordingly. Uh, Heir to the Empire, every version of that book is, is through the roof. Um, and of course, the Thrawn uh, miniseries through Marvel. Number one, uh, all the variants, as well as even like the random issues that people are picking up, whether it's dollar bins or leftover back issue bin cover price pickups, are doing really well. Uh, and it's really no surprise. Star Wars fever is rampant. Uh, I, it was the one thing I noticed people kind of talked about last week. Um, I think it was like the Bolo show. There was some talk in the comment section about, you know, a lot of people feel like it's overwhelming it, it, how kind of fast yeah, and some serious. Some people are sitting it out, which I don't it's understandable. Coming this close to it. I mean, some of the prices, they're getting up there. Yeah. And it moves quick. And it just... You know, just a mere reference to a character. And we always tell people, especially, you know, if you're speculating, like if you make good money on a book, don't look back, right? Be happy with what you did. But oh my goodness, would I love to have those two nine, eight uh, Matino one and 50 Thrawn number ones I used to have that I sold a long time ago during the Matina craze uh, and never even thought we would come to a live action Thrawn craze, but we are here. Yeah, no doubt. And I'm excited to see Star Wars getting all the hype because that wasn't long ago where we're, before Mandalorian with the movies and people kind of hating on the movies. You didn't see too much Star Wars comic book love and you're seeing a lot of it now and it's always great to see. And it's not just the new stuff. It's the old stuff. It's the whole span. What's canon? What's not canon? What might be canon? But uh, yeah, Darth Revan's another one everyone's talking about. Yep. But going on into the next one, this might be attributed to some of the King in Black, but no doubt since Donnie Cates has been writing, we have Noel up in the upward trends as well. Oh, no, this is 100% King and Black. This is definitely um, King and Black. If you look at like a lot of releases this week, there are a lot of releases that I would think the comic publishers were hoping for a lot of attention on. But several books I noticed just weren't really getting traction as far as interest in the market and i think it's because king and black is really such a big event book um now this isn't isn't the new comic book day show so we're not going to talk about it. there is you know another book kind of getting some attention but other than that really everybody's talking about whether it's the secret variant or any of the number uh, of variants and exclusives that exist for king of black but not only that there's a marvel tales book coming out back issues are going crazy and just this week we saw some of the hot top lists uh include the Venom number three, fourth print, that kind of like sketch cover of the original cover uh, of the first appearance of Null. And no matter where you sit on late printings, I had a great discussion uh, with some uh, folks on Twitter about late printings. And I know people sit all over the place, but the, the new community is buying them up. So it was interesting to see a, another cover of that book. Seems like three, four different covers of that of that issue have kind of popped. And even the Marvel Tales book, it's interesting to note, that's coming out this week. Uh, we've talked about how a lot of those Marvel Tales really aren't relevant, right? Because they're, they're the kind of stories that, aren't key issues or aren't key to the character um, because a lot of those 
have already been reprinted multiple times. This book actually has a new printing of the first appearance of Null right in the Marvel Tales book. Um, so there's so much heat on this character, the, all the nullified variants going across the board. Um, and Null is really kind of getting a full Venom treatment. And uh, I think this is a character that's here to stay. Um, and there's a lot to be excited for going forward. But King in Black is going to be a major, major litmus test to see, like, what is the scope and scale of this character? Yeah, and it's great to see because you don't see it too often with the Marvel Tales. It's usually a character that has a much broader history, much wider catalog. Noel is a more recent character for that to be chosen for Marvel Tales. Tells you something. What do you say? You always say follow the money, right? Yeah, oh yeah, follow that money. They got the money in, in Noel. Well, that's what we're talking about for the upper trends this week is good old John Diggle. If you've watched CW, Jack's a big fan of that Arrowverse. We know John Diggle from that. And there's some news surrounding him, right? Yeah, so, um, you know, the the speculator uh, will probably care more about, you know, Thrawn and, and Null. Those are the obvious topics. This is the one I'm excited about because, as you mentioned, I'm a fan of the CW Arrowverse. I've mentioned we need a new title for that, though. Uh, uh, let us know in the comments section what, what should be the new title um, of this new this new universe. Not HBO Maxverse. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know... Um, we, we know that Arrow is now concluded. Uh, we know that um, uh, that uh, Supergirl is coming to an end. Um, I don't want to be negative, but I don't think Batwoman is long for this world. Um, and we also know Legends of Tomorrow. But at the same point, uh, you know, there's a, a and, and Black Lightning is ending as well, but there's a Black Lightning spinoff show coming. We've got Lois and Clark. Uh, coming new uh, to the CW. Uh, and uh, there's been some other uh, show announcements coming for, for new DC character shows, like the, what has everybody excited from Future State, the Wonder Girl show that will star Yara Flores. So we know that this CW verse is going to continue. Um, and, and because of that, it, there's a lot of credence for characters that are going to continue as well. But, you know, in the past, it, it, it had always been kind of like a, a, a villain of the week on that show. CW spec had been really popular uh, back well before Brian and I were doing YouTube regularly together back in the old message board days. And then people kind of got hit to the fact that like it was really a burn and turn game. And once people got burnt out from that process, they didn't even want to play the game anymore. So villains and characters who had three episode arcs weren't even popular anymore. But, but Diggle is a character who appeared on Arrow from the first episode to the last, appeared in every crossover, appeared on every show on the CW. The actor who plays John Diggle is not like some new to television actor. He also played an extremely prominent role on the television show Blue Bloods. So he is a guy with, with, with network television acting chops. And we all kind of felt like there was some tease throughout the series to to john stewart and green lantern and then at the finally at the end we get the reference uh in the big crossover um the the crisis crossover we get the reference that you know on other worlds he's called john diggle stewart and then at the last episode of arrow he gets that that green lantern ring so now we know he's going to be at least within the cw universe john stewart and recently you mentioned uh i kind of like buried the lead here but you know that that the there's news that he's coming back. He's going to appear in several other television shows as this character post Power Ring. So one can assume that we're going to see Jon Stewart. I think this could be huge uh, to, for the CW to have their own Green Lantern uh, to, to be able to kind of foster into the future. Uh, there are some issues of note. Arrow number one is the first ever comic appearance of John Diggle. Um, probably the book, though, that is more important is uh, Green Arrow 24, which is the, from the Jeff Lemire New 52 run. It's the first appearance of John Diggle in DC continuity. Now that he is like an official character, um, I think that's kind of the one uh, to go for. But either way, both of those issues are in demand. I would be looking at those. Uh, they're already kind of spiking a little bit, but I think they have some room to grow depending on how big the character's presence on the CW is. Yeah, it's always anxious to see, especially now with the HBO Max or what used to be DC Universe. Yeah. Um, how do they decide what's going to be Arrowverse or CW, what's going to be HBO Max? And it'd be cool to see, you know, the, they're putting Wonder Woman straight to HBO Max. You know, that's going to increase some subscribers. I wonder if they'll ever do like a crossover where half of it's going to be in Arrowverse and half of it's going to be in HBO Max and may, maybe try to get subscribers that way. But it also brought to mind um, 
<laughs> when I said not not HBO Max versus that old Dave Chappelle skit <laughs> with those old HBO commercials when he was like, it's just regular ass TV. <laughs> that's, that's true. <laughs> There's our upward trends. We're going to shift now into the downward trends. We talked about Star Wars on the three up, but we also have some on the down. And that seems to be the standard Star Wars movie characters. We still are high on them. We think it's a great buying opportunity, but they seem to be left out right now as far as where the attention is gathered. Yeah. So um, first off, I want to say that this down list that we're going to go through right now is one of the best buying opportunity lists I've seen in a long time on three up, three down. Um, this is a section here. Um, there's no doubt as all of this heat has gone on, these characters have been overlooked. Now I could go into like, I, I think like Lando um, and, you know, Han, the, the, Donald Glover. I love Donald Glover. Right. And we know Donald Glover's coming back as Lando. And um, there is so much momentum for a solo to a movie that was kind of panned originally, but people like you and I who love the movie have been very vocal and there's more and more of a groundswell of people saying, you know, it was just a fun movie. Like, we'd like to see more. Uh, and, and because the, the Mandalorian has kind of opened so many new people up, it, going back and telling these, like, prequel stories with a lot of these characters are great. But also, the newest trilogy of movies that introduced us to new characters like Poe Dameron, like Finn, um, like uh, Ray Skywalker, um, their first appearances specifically, I really want to hone in, Ray Skywalker. That name Skywalker, that confirmation at the end of the film, uh, you know, you getting that moment, um, it didn't pan out in the comics at all. It didn't do anything. These, it, we've talked about Phasma. Phasma is a character that so much merchandise was made, so much interest was in that character. Um, action figures were, were selling very well, but yet they're, they're, they've barely done anything with the character, which leads us to believe they're going to do more. And if they're going to do, you know, if they're going to do more, Poe Dameron number two uh, from Marvel, that's the first appearance. I mean, it's just not, it's, it's nothing. The variants are cheap. Um, so there's been no heat on this. And we always like to say, you know, uh, our suggestion, you, you buy what you like, you do it your way. But we like to zig when others zag. Um, Brian, you like to say skate where the puck is. And, um, and, and, and this is one of those things where if everybody is jumping on all of these dark course books and you feel like you know what i feel like i missed that boat i feel like i'm left out of that game it feels too rich for my blood i feel overwhelmed i understand i don't blame you uh it, but this is another way that you can still get involved in, in star wars collecting star wars fandom as well as star wars speculating because the reality is post pandemic we are going to get new feature films and these feature films are going to be continuations of the the series as well as um probably some one shot and prequel stuff as well uh and the success of the mandalorian i think has only expanded the star wars brand so i'm bullish on all things star wars so the fact that this part of the market is so overlooked to me is intriguing yeah i mean even right now with the way of you know the first prince of ahsoka and some of these other characters that you're seeing the prices go for and yeah it's more smaller print run but i would still if i wanted to i'd go and look for that first star wars number one comic book and, and get a good copy of that as well because while those other books are rising way up there in value get some of the stuff that you'd like to collect if you're a star wars fan that maybe doesn't have that attention right now and then shift right. Right. I always say Star Wars number one is the first appearance of Star Wars yeah. in comics. Um, and that alone makes that book one of, the, to me, the best comic books of all time. So it just, yeah, at the, it's undervalued when you look at it compared to Thrawn and Ahsoka and even what, like the, the Sabine Wren, uh, uh, Kanan Last Padawan stuff is doing. Uh, you know, it's just, it's just insane. So. Yeah, there's always stuff for whether other people are looking, look somewhere else and might find something that you can get for a decent price. But either way, the next one we're talking about, another great buying opportunity. This is one that was up not too long ago, but we haven't heard much news about it. But we're talking about Eternals. Yeah, so the next two that we talk about are really just victims of the spec cycle. Yeah. Um, they are amazing uh, investments. They're amazing books to collect. They're, they're, they're keys for anybody. The first one you mentioned, Eternals. Um, we've talked about Eternals for a long time. We have a belief that, you know, Eternals is is going to be big. It's, it's I mean, look what they did with Guardians. They no doubt do the same with Eternals and then married together in the MCU. <laughs> right, yeah. And, and then you can argue that 
because of the success of Guardians, they've got an even bigger cast for Eternals than they had for Guardians. Um, so they're even working with more as more actors. Everybody wants to be in the MCU. People forget when they were originally casting the MCU, you know, you had to talk actors into taking those roles. Tom, Tom Cruise was supposed to originally be Iron Man. So you, you start looking at that kind of stuff. And, and this movie's this coming. was the mummy. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, what a disaster. Um, but it, you start looking at this stuff. This is a pandemic situation. This movie would be out. We'd be looking at this movie um, right now. And these prices have dropped. First, Cersei. Uh, Cersei's a character who her relationship with Black Knight, she's probably going to carry out beyond just Eternals movies. Um, the, I mean, we're talking about like like 50 to 75 percent drops in a lot of 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 these first appearances eternals one eternals two eternals three all of those keys that everybody was chasing from five to seven to nine to eleven all of that stuff it's all down so why do we not believe in eternals now i don't think there's any reason for that it's just the spec cycle it's just Right now, there's no current Eternals news as, you know, things are slowly getting back together in Hollywood. We even had, you know, obviously some pandemic hiccups of, of recent that have, have re-slowed things down. And, and there's even talk again, of course, in January about possible shutdowns, which could slow things down again. All of these are giving buying opportunities for these like blue, I call them blue chip investments because there's just no chance of this stuff not panning out. We know that this movie's coming. You don't have to hold this stuff till the movie. You, you, you can drop it when the trailer drops and between now and the trailer, you're almost guaranteed to see rises in prices just based on what you see in the history of the MCU. Um, so this is one of those things kind of similar to what we just talked about with Star Wars. If you felt like you missed out on Eternals, um, this is a great time. If you're already invested in Eternals and you're mad, like your Eternals portfolio has taken a hit, this is a great time to double down. Yeah, which leads us to the last one, the three down. Uh, we got Young Avengers, now there's a little bit of caveat to this is because there was a tweet today with an with an arrow emoji and people started buying up comics left and right at that Kate Bishop. But yeah, Young Avengers right. in general is kind of down right now. Right. Well, see, this is the thing is this this has been this was really pointed out to me last week by uh, a lot of people recognize them as blue green artifacts uh, on YouTube or on IG. But, you know, we know him as Tony. And he really pointed this out to me. This was a, a book that was down. Talk about Young Avengers uh, number one, but really just the Young Avengers stuff in general. Any of those keys surrounding Cape were just down. Um, and over 50% from like the hype. And it's funny, you mentioned like a tweet sparking things back up. Because An again, emoji. <laughs> it, it, this is really the same thing as, uh, as the, the Eternals. We know, we know Kate Bishop's coming. Right, we know she's coming as part of the Hawkeye series. Uh, so Matt Fraction and Dave and David Oz's run—that's something that everybody should be paying attention to, um, and as well as the first appearances um, and all the stuff with the Young Avengers. But also, we know that with Cassie Lang, um, with the the casting um, of Kang the Conqueror, that we've getting all these pieces put in place that we're going to get some sort of like full Young Avengers within the MCU, whether or not, again, it's in the Disney plus television version or in the big screen. And I think, and eventually it's not going to matter which one, cause you're going to see them kind of like blend together and you're, you're going to see people go between those two mediums. But the reality is these, these have been down. And even if this emoji spikes it a bit, it'll, it'll drop back down from that because there'll be dead periods where people aren't talking about it. Um, as we have to kind of get through before we can talk about the Hawkeye show, we got to get through WandaVision and we've got to get through, um, you know, uh, Winter Soldier and Falcon, and people will be paying attention to those properties and then whatever new announcements and, and you have this opportunity. So these are properties I'd be paying attention to that I'd say are blue chip investment opportunities because all three on this part, this down portion of this list are sure to have movies be made about these characters, uh, you know, almost guaranteed and, and, or television shows and from Disney Marvel, probably through Disney plus um, in or major theatrical release. And it's rare that you really get opportunities to buy books that have already been sitting at prices um, double or 
books like the Star Wars books, which are selling for just a fraction of what the market is already showing it's willing to pay for key Star Wars issues. So um, again, that's the, that's why I love three up, three down, because it's easy to talk about what's hot. The, the down portion is where you provide the opportunity for tomorrow's hot books. Yeah, definitely. Like you said at the beginning of the down portion, all of them present great buying opportunities. I, I think it was a great up and down list. You, the viewer, let us know what you think of the list this week. But either way, this is Brian Jack from Seven Men's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.